Oh, it's all pretty damn good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so something's going to happen. Oh, a car accident. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we got two <laughs> phenomenal backups. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, and that's the other story that came out today among uh, amongst everything else that went on. There was Lundquist. Um, he, had a, he had some statements today about, you know, you know, over the summer, I'll have to talk to management to see if I'm. Well, that's I'm, obvious, man. That's okay. If I'm neat, I'm just saying that's another big storyline that came out of today, beyond the the accident and and the signings and and the and the shade trade was Lundquist pretty much saying, yeah, I'm going to sit down with management in the off season and see if uh, you know I'm still needed here, and if not, you know he he may be heading off, right? whether it's a buyout or or they can work out a trade or what you know whatever it is. I thought that was some huge news today. Uh, all right. Well, um, okay, Kevin, while we're on that, let's just look at this perspective. Okay. So Hank didn't get traded. He didn't go anywhere, right? He has that interview today. <clears throat> does, does it make it at least easier now for the fan base, either whether the lovers or the haters or whatever the hell, how you want to look at the uh, Hank situation here? He didn't go. I'll, I'll talk from my perspective. I'm glad he didn't go. I, I would have definitely supported him a hundred percent if he had, had went to a cup contender, but he's he's not. And and let's just take uh, Shesty's injury aside. Let's say Shesty is starting tomorrow night. He's still in the game and everything, and they're all still here one way or the other. But I I think now one way or the other. Let's say they they go on some kind of we have no idea what's going to happen now these next couple of months. But one way or the other, we get to the uh, off season, and now I think as a fan base and and more importantly to to Hank and his family and where he's at, he kind of gets to breathe a little bit because, you know, the organization gets to see this team grow. They get, we got, we've got to see Shesty come up. We've seen Georgiev play incredibly well. We've seen him struggle a little bit. Um, but it's, it's all kind of played out in front of us. I think there's just been a, we've been very, very lucky. I think the organization has been very lucky and we are definitely lucky as a fan base the way this thing is all panned out. So if Shesterkin doesn't come back for some reason, but Georgiev now carries the load, and say Hank comes in, maybe the two of them now, they get us into the playoffs. And what's that going to be like if, if Shesterkin comes back and we're in the playoffs? But these are all good things, look. But forget about that aside. We go to the offseason now, and now Hank at least can make a decision, and he can look back and say, hey, it's, it's okay for me to leave right now. And he might, number one, he might retire. He might, you know, go out on a good note and say, hey, look, you know, I, I don't want to play for anybody else. And then because another long season and obviously not playing as much as he has this year, but who knows. But I think it, it might it's, – it's turning into a healthier kind of outlook, I think, more than anything as a, as a fan for me, as an organization, and maybe for Hank and his, his family right now. He's not uprooting. He's not going. This team has a chance to get in the playoffs. Anything can happen in a playoff series. You, you never know. But when this thing is all said and done this year, Hank can now look back and the organization can look back. And I think it's going to be a cleaner break or a healthier break than if Hank had been dealt today and kind of sent off. I think that would have really hurt. I think it would have hit us uh, all, all as a reality as a fan base. But I think it's going to be a little easier now. And I don't know if we should be maybe selfish to the fact that, hey, you know, as far as our emotions and, and all of us who love Hank and everything he's did for us, at least now we can almost kind of almost see him ride into the sunset uh, in the offseason if he does go uh, next year one way or the other instead of him having to be dealt in the, in the, in the you know, today and then run off to some organization and we would have been like, oh, man, this sucks, but we got to move forward. Just love to get your take on that now. So you're saying you're happy Shashork had gone into a car accident? Is that that's no? I I, I look. I'll roll the tape back. <laughs> I said put Shashorkin's injury aside. I can't said aside. I I can't said let's say he was starting tomorrow night. <laughs> Hank is still here. Now shut up and answer my question. <laughs> well, I I actually I, I think it does make a difference to be honest because if if Shishurkin, doesn't get into a car accident and, and is around and, and Georgiev is the backup, you know, I don't think you see Lundqvist for the rest of the season. I, I don't think he play And I, I think it is a bad uh, sort of end to his, his career here where, where they're having that discussion after him not playing, you know, since January. So, you know, I think now it, it's, it's interesting that he's going to be in the mix, you know, for the next couple of weeks in these huge games, 
I mean, you could see Quinn go and now lean on Lundqvist. I, you know, the last two shows, I, I was begging for fans to give me a reason why Lundqvist should be playing because there weren't any. Now you almost have to find me a reason why he shouldn't be playing. You know, he's if, if it's, you know, this team, you know, not moving Kreider and Foss are showing they they think they have a chance this year. If that's the case, you know, it, Lundqvist may be giving them a better chance to win than Georgiev. You know, he's never been in a playoff race. Before. Lucky us. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I'm, no, but I'm saying that this is all set up because it's just York and injury um, or car accident. Um, because I, I don't think Hank is in the mix otherwise. But now he is. And I think he's a serious player in the next couple of weeks until Shish Yorkin comes back. And I tell you what, Paulie, if if Hank gets hot, you may you may say you may see him stay in if Shish, when Shish Yorkin is ready to come back. And wouldn't As, that be amazing? That would be, Paulie, that would be insane. <laughs> <laughs> We, it really we, we only got to beat the Bruins. No, we're not even in the playoffs yet. Oh man! <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It's it's whatever whatever way this season ends right now. As far as ha- I mean, I've got Hank written down on my notepad here in big letters, and right underneath that is Georgiev, and and just sitting the fact that we have these two guys, and then on on the bottom of my paper here, I've got Shishjerk nine one and zero. First guy in, in, in New York Rangers history to go 9-1-0 in his first 10 starts. He's the fourth in league history to do that. Um, seven straight wins. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Richter had 11 straight. That's all time. But um, seven straight wins as a rookie. Uh, I think that's a, a Ranger record. I mean, four 40-save games. And uh, it just it goes on and on about it's just jerking here. I mean, it's just this blast of a time we've been having with this kid in net, and it's just, it's insane that he got into a car accident yesterday, <laughs> and now we've got the King and Georgie boy, they're, they're taking over, crazy, it's like, a, it's like, a, listen to me, I sound like, what's his face on Curb Your Enthusiasm, this is nuts! Alright, Larry, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you... It, this is like uh, like a soap opera here or something. So, yeah, and it really is, like I said, it, it's brought Lundqvist back in the mix. I mean, the guy was, you know, in the press box the other day. You know, the king, um, the guy who carried this franchise for the last 15 years on his back was in the press box the other day watching. You know, he was up there with the moms. Um, and and you, you assumed his Ranger career was over. And, you know, a car accident later, the guy is going to be a crucial part of a stretch run. It's, it, it's, it's madness. This it really is. This was supposed to be over, Kevin. This yeah. was supposed to be over. It was supposed to be done. We weren't supposed to be talking about the goaltending situation anymore. And here we are. Yeah. Yeah, it's only, it, like I said, it can only even get crazier. If uh, Lundqvist steps up now. You know, in these next couple of weeks, and then you know what is what is Quinn doing? Like you said, you you gave us all the numbers on Chest Yorkin and and how amazing he's been. Um, do you just throw him in the middle of a stretch run um, after not playing for three weeks or however long he's going to be out? While say Lundqvist the somehow catches fire, um, you know that that would be nuts. Absolutely insane. The, the, I, I don't even know where the fan base would fall on something like that because, uh, you know, there's so much love for both players, uh, both goaltenders. That, that would, I, I, I don't envy uh, Quinn if that is the case. I mean, look, I hope it is because that means the Rangers are in a very good situation in, in three weeks. But, wow, craziness. All right, so here's the scene. Georgia starts. The Islanders go up 3 nothing. Quinn pulls... <laughs> Georgiev out of the game tomorrow night. <laughs> Hank comes in, stands on his head. The Rangers turn around, and they tie the game, and then they win it 5-3 with an empty netter. And Hank takes back over and runs the gamut, baby. Yeah, what do look, you say? That, look, that, you know, that easily can be done. You know, that that's not that far fetched of a story or a scenario. I mean, you know, maybe uh, not, you know, like that. But, you know, you could definitely see him take over. Um, so, if you had wow. told me we were going to be talking about this, I would have told you you're out of your mind. Crazy. It's crazy. Good night, Kev. I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So here's the deal. I want to ask you, I mean, you brought up about Shea earlier as far as the, the, you know, the trade and everything else. And defensively now, you, you just as far as Smith and, and, and Lingram has been playing well too, you, you just think this is going to be a better mix. I mean, obviously Brady wasn't a big fan favorite. Either. I mean, he was. I mean, there was a lot of love going out to him today, which was great. Um, but you, you just kind of feel this is going to – the mechanics of the defensive squad now are going to work a little bit better? Uh, no, actually. I, I You know, I, I think Shea did have some difficulties on – on the back end, and it seemed like for the last couple of weeks, him and Truba have been on the ice for every goal against. So I, I, I don't think the two of them had been playing that well. But, you know, Shea is a defenseman who's put up, I think he has like 23 points on the season or something along those lines. I mean, Brendan Smith isn't going to come in and, and put up that kind of offense at all. So, you know, he is going to be missed. I mean, you know, uh, he is a... a he is a good player. I mean, it's not like he's terrible. Um, and, and, you know, he's better than Brendan Smith. Um, so I think he will be, he will be missed. There may be a little bit of a, um, you know, feeling out process here to see, you know, maybe you have to change up the pairings here a little bit more. You have to break up. I, I'd hate to break up Lingren and Fox, but you know, they may have to now. There may be a little shuffling there, and, and maybe you have to bring up a right call for a high act. Or, hey, look, Andre Miller, when he's done with his college season, do you bring him up? You know, I, I don't know how ready he'd be or if that's just, uh, you know, fantasy or not. But um, I, I think there may be a, a little bit of an issue on the defensive end over the next couple of games while they figure it out with, with Shea being gone. You know, he's a guy who's who's been on the back end. Um, you know, for the last number of years. So you don't just take a guy out like that and don't lose a step, at least initially. Um, hopefully Smith, you know, figures things out, plays like he did the last couple of games on the plays like he, he did when we first traded for him from the Red Wings when he was the, just a dominant defensive physical presence out there. If he could bring that, then look, then it, it won't be a problem. We, we, really, we really won't miss Shea. Um, again, we may miss some of that offense because you're not going to get that from Smith. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I, I think Shea, of all the players that were being talked about being traded, I mean, other than maybe Mark Stahl, but he really wasn't going anywhere. You know, he was probably the guy who had to move uh, to open up cap space. You know, I, he really wasn't playing very well. So, um, you know, are they going to be able to eventually, you know, fill in the void for him? Absolutely. I, I You know, with all the young guys coming up, um, it shouldn't be a problem in the next, you know, year or so to, to fill in. Um, but for now, maybe, yeah, maybe they will have a, a little bit of trouble, um, filling in for him. You know, it's up to Brendan Smith to step up now. Let's see if he's up to the challenge. Now this kid Gautier who comes in here and, uh, he blows the penalty shot the other night. How do we get rid of him? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think after three he's, games, he's buddy? Yeah, Keen is going to. Oh, you know who the bust is, right? Capo is still the bust. What have you <laughs> yeah, done you know, for me lately, he, buddy? He he had that one game, and we all got excited, and uh, yeah, he's sort of Snooze been invisible fest. again. Snooze fest. Yeah, look, and look, if if Buchnevich is going to miss a couple of games, you know, maybe it, you know, I don't know what what Quinn's going to do with the lineup. If if maybe they they bring Kako up there and say, look. Let's go. Let's step it up now. It's time for you to, you know, show what, uh, you know, why we, we made you the second overall pick. Uh, Buchnevich is out. We need someone to step up. We're looking at you, big boy. And uh, let's see what you got because, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, he had those, you know, that one game where he scored. He had a couple of nice games in a row, whatever it was, when uh, D. Giuseppe got on his line. But, you know, it, he's sort of been invisible recently. So, um, you know, he's, he, that sort of gets lost in the shuffle with how well Panarin and Zabinijad and Kreider and, and Strom have, have been playing. But, yeah, he's he's got to step up, man, uh, especially now that Buchnevich is going to be out maybe for a couple of games. You know, I'm hopefully looking at, at Kako to, to, you know, look himself in the mirror and, and, and maybe provide a, a little spark there. So here's the scene. The Rangers are down 3-0 <laughs> to the <laughs> New York <go>. Islanders. <laughs> Ank Lundquist comes in. And then Capo Caco has a hat trick. <laughs> Touch the game for the Rangers. Man, this Islander game is going to be exciting. <laughs> exciting. I can't wait. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> the, only problem, the only problem about what you're saying is uh, 
you know, the, the island is 